one moment. Yes, thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, thank you at the outset. I would just like to extend my heartfelt gratitude uh, to Dr. Rajiv Chawla, sir, and Dr. Shalini Jaggi for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, share my views on a very important aspect, you know, the nutritional uh, strategies for uh, obesity. I will be sharing a few uh, very practical tips. And as we all know that uh, the epidemic of obesity is already uh, increasing and we can see that the obesity has been increasing from 1980. If you see, it's been from 45%. <clears throat> from it's already reached to still starting to 16% uh, whether it's male or female. So it's really increasing. When we also talk about about pre-diabetes, we also see that the incidence of pre-diabetes is also increasing and where we as a paramedical, we uh, do face, you know, uh, uh, such cases uh, with, I, with uh, you know, pre-diabetes and with obesity. So it becomes very, very important for us to, um, for the primary prevention uh, is very, very important where we need to really focus. When we see the, we've also seen the prevalence of diabetes and pre-diabetes in this uh, 15 states in the ICMR India Diabetes study where where the, uh, the prevalence has actually, we can see all over in the different 15 states, it's almost from 4% uh, percent to almost 13% percent, uh, is, uh, it is prevalent. So we can already see that the prevalence of uh, pre-diabetes is increasing. So what are, why do we need to really detect and treat these pre-diabetes so that we can actually decrease the uh, uh, complications uh, maybe at the macrovascular level or even at the microvascular uh, level. So uh, hence, we need to understand. And when we see obesity combining with type 2 diabetes, they are the uh, they are at about six times more risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So that is why we need to treat pre-diabetes and there are n number of papers and the most the most uh, uh, the common the most important paper which we have been really talking about is the DPP trial which we have seen that the lifestyle intervention was uh, uh, the lifestyle changes could actually show that, uh, it could reduce uh, 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 with the with uh, with the intensive lifestyle modification could actually reduce the uh, uh, could prevent them with diabetes. Then we have also the ten year follow up, which also showed that the prevention or the delay of diabetes with lifestyle modification or metformin could actually persist for last. For, uh, for 10 years, then we have the 15 years uh, trial, which also supports the importance of diabetes prevention. And then we have the Indian Diabetes Prevention Pro, uh, uh, Program, which is the IDDP, which again showed that the progression of IDT to diabetes, uh, which is high in Asian Indians, and uh, both the LSM and metformin significantly reduced the incidence of diabetes in Asian Indians. And again, we have the number of trials which shows that the intensive lifestyle modification could relatively reduce uh, the risk reduction to almost the dark wing study could reduce to around 42 percent. Uh, the Finnish study is around 58 percent and the, uh, the, uh, the U.S. diabetes prevention program, uh, program which reduced the risk to less than 58 so the number of trials which has shown that lifestyle modification is uh, really, really important. And we have the famous direct trial, which also showed that, uh, that uh, you know, with, uh, with the diet, which it, the remission, which we are all talking about, that it could, that around 46% in the intervention group could achieve remission at the end of 12 hours. And out of this intervention group, the, the subjects who achieved the weight loss of more than 15 kgs could actually achieve uh, the, uh, could actually achieve the weight loss, uh, the remission at around, at about 86 
percent. So basically, at twelve months, almost half of the participants achieved a remission to a non-diabetic state and of anti-diabetic status. Along with this, we also know that our the Indian diet, India is a carbohydrate country, and our diet is loaded with carbohydrates. And the most famous, the starch study, has also shown us that the the card that our diet is loaded with carbohydrate. That's around seventy percent, whether it's uh, north, south, east, west, and we are a carbohydrate country. And even this famous uh, the cure study, which also showed that the carbohydrate content is very high and it's almost or more than 400 uh, grams in males and for uh, 392 grams we are consuming uh, whereas the ada recommends that the carbohydrate intake should be the minimum uh, should be around 165 grams now with all this we all know that the diet is changing because of the urbanization and maybe these all are the factors we can say that which is leading to obesity. So can, can any one single diet can be recommended for the weight loss? So again, there are a number of diets of which a patient can adhere to. But again, at the end of the day, we need few practical uh, nutritional strategies which can help us to achieve weight loss. The American Dietetic Association says that a reduction of around 500 to 1000 kilocalories per day is advised to achieve around 1 kg weight loss per week. So uh, this again is very important if the patient is focusing for weight loss and the total caloric intake should be distributed throughout the day with the consumption of four to five meals per snacks per day with greater energy intake during the day, which should be preferred rather than the evening times. Now, when we're talking about also the weight loss, it can be classified into three categories. It can be manipul. It can be, you know, the, the weight loss can be, the manipulation can be done through macronutrient content, which is the green. Uh, it can be the low fat, high fat, high protein or low carb. And it can be, it can be also the time restricted uh, fasting, which already Shilpa has told. And then it can be also restriction of specific uh, food, maybe uh, it can be the plant based or the Mediterranean diet or the gluten free diet. So, we need to focus on few things uh, to achieve our goal. So, we can substitute lower energy dense food for the higher energy dense foods, especially uh, I think. And then, my plate method is a wonderful way how we can actually tell our patient at our clinic that how they can reduce the energy dense food and they can replace it with more of fiber. They can decrease the uh, energy dense even at the main course. So uh, that's very, very important because usually when we are hungry, we start eating a lot of carbs. Uh, so we need to focus on fiber more than on carbs. Add a low energy dense first course and we all know about uh, about uh, about the, the that we need to start with fiber first and then we need to focus on the carbs choose water and other low calorie beverages to satisfy thirst include portion control tools and there are a number of uh, uh, tools which can be uh, used there uh, you know they, there are uh, there are spoons there are cutoris there are plate methods there's so many tools which can be easily there are hand methods which can be shown to the patient uh, to choose foods, then they, we can also choose low glycemic index foods. That's very, very important uh, to reduce your weight and at the same time achieve euglycemia. We need to reduce the uh, carb load. Again, that is very important. So we have to reduce the meal frequency. It's not necessarily that we need to eat. Traditionally, every one of us have been eating four to five meals per day. But again, it's very, it's not very important that we need to do so. We can also restrict our meals to around uh, three, uh, three meals, three to four meals only, because again, that would lead to high caloric and carbohydrate load. We need to keep a portion control, split our meals, add 
uh, especially in the meat, mid meal, we can add a protein or a fruit or a healthy uh, nuts can be added, maybe a roasted uh, nuts or sprouts or almonds or walnuts can be added. When we are talking about beverages, we can also focus on local uh, uh, beverages like your black tea, coffee or buttermilk or vegetable smoothies to give a satiety, restrict on the quantity and improve the quality uh, of the carbohydrate intake. So yes, we need to focus more on the complex carbohydrates. We need to add a protein in every meal so that we are satiated and uh, we do not feel hungry and uh, eat frequently. Uh, again, there are a number of studies which shows that the low carbohydrate diet also helps to improve the glycemic control uh, and it also helps to lower the anti-glycemic medications uh, along with the weight loss. These are simple tips how you can, you know, how you can ask your patients to reduce your postprandial blood glucose. So rather than focusing on high carbs like your aloo paratha and white toklas or even toast or poha, which has been usually used as a breakfast, we can add a, uh, you know, a protein and a fiber combination so that we can actually reduce the postprandial spike. So we can add uh, egg, uh, you know, egg uh, is a wonderful uh, protein or a paneer or a tofu or even vegetables like uh, your cauliflower or your green leafy vegetables can be added and even sprouts can be added uh, to reduce the glycemic uh, profile uh, the glycemic index of that food again the the fruits and the vegetables intake are very low in uh, especially in the south uh, asia so we need to uh, focus on uh, focus on increasing on the fruits and the vegetables we also all need to increase on the fruits and the uh, vegetables uh, we should also know that for india the low intake of fruits and vegetables is causing higher deaths than intake of high sodium and trans fats so uh, uh, hence, we need to focus more on fruits and vegetables. And this is a snapshot of the picture, which is just taken today by a wonderful lecture by Dr. Anjana, who, uh, who has just uh, beautifully shown this plate, uh, which which will uh, you know which will prevent, uh, which where we can show that the people. This is the plate for the normal uh, glucose tolerance, and this is the plate with a little modification where we can reduce a little amount of the carbohydrates, increase the proteins, and the fat can be almost the same, and the dietary fiber can increase a little, and this. Uh, can also help in the prevention uh, of diabetes. Again, uh, meal replacers can be used. So substituting one or two meals, maybe with the snacks, can be uh, it can uh, it it will be helpful in the weight loss. So it can be in the form of soups or smoothies or even bars can be uh, can be actually uh, uh, given to our patients. Then we have this very famous uh, study which also says that the the order of eating affects the you know it affects the ghrelin suppression so that is why we need to focus on fiber first rather than on carbohydrate first and this is a, a famous study by alpana shukla we also need to focus on reading food labels. So food labels will also help us to understand the amount of the food serving, um, amount of the energy in a particular food item or the carbohydrate content, the sugar content and the, uh, the fiber and the sodium content. And these are there are various guidelines in the food labels which we need to follow. And uh, we have the, uh, uh, you know, we have, uh, we can follow this table which shows that if the sugar content is five grams or less can be taken, total fat should be three grams or less and the saturated fat should be 1.5 or even the salt should be around less than 0.3 grams or less when we are focusing on patients who are, are hypertensive or with CKD patients. Again, um, along with the nutritional strategies, I also wanted to focus on this very important aspect is that is what uh, sitting, which is uh, again treated as a new smoking and uh, WHO recommends screen free time of, uh, of two hours. So that's why we need to reduce our screen timing. That's very, very important uh, when we are, when we are focusing on weight loss. 
then uh, teleconsultation is uh, again is a way forward and we, this is a very recent case to report which we had which is just published and which has helped us to reduce which helped us to reduce the weight and the glycosylated hemoglobin and also the blood pressure of the of the subject uh, just with the teleconsultation uh, again when you're talking about nutritional aspect exercise is again very very important and uh, aerobic exercise at least 150 minutes per week is very important along with that yoga and tai chi can also be included and finally we have this plate by rssdi which also shows us that the carbohydrates should be limited to around 50%, I would say 50 to 60%, but 50% is better and increase the amount of the protein, fat, uh, the good quality fat should be focused and we need to increase our diet and more in fruits and vegetables and pulses. So finally, we need to learn to make our lifestyle changes and not the diet. So when we are focusing for a long time period, we need to focus on LSM. And there is, we all know that there is not an ideal percentage of calories from macronutrients as there is no one size fits all. So we need, we all know that diet has to be highly individualized, simple, structured, consistent as per the current eating patterns and preferences uh, and metabolic goals. So uh, everything we need to understand Finally, that mindful eating is the key to success. Thank you.